Seventh guest, not the most December of games, I'll grant you that, but there's a reason I picked it for this fine season of December, and it's specifically tied to my own memories of getting my hands on a PC for the first time. You see, I grew up in an era where there wasn't really such a thing as IT lessons. I went to a school where you were more likely to get stabbed than educated, and the only computers they had on hand were a bank of acorns. IT lessons happened once every couple of weeks, and every single lesson taught us how to print a Word document. I'm not even exaggerating. If you ever need me to print some text from an acorn using a dot matrix printer, I am fully trained. No, it was thanks to a friend of mine from a family that seemed to always have the latest and best cool stuff that I got to experience a PC. He had three games, specifically. SimCity 2000, which looked incredible compared to my crappy SimCity on the SNES. Virtual Pool, which, wow, look at that, multiple dimensions. But there was a third, and I don't want to hold you in suspense any longer because I know you're desperate to know what that game was. It was a game I'm about to announce right now. It was seventh guest. It was seventh guest. And to a young mind, this was the future of gaming. This was the pinnacle of what we'd come to expect. Real people up there on the screen actually talking to each other. Everything looked real. You could explore a big house. There was actual sound that wasn't just blips and beeps. Would gaming ever evolve from this? Holy moly, the year is 1995 and we are living in the future. I'd just like to point out that I didn't actually play it. It was almost like my friend at the time already knew that the game was pretty lackluster once you got behind the wheel, so he purposefully took the reins and showed me a few cool bits, and then he switched it off and went back to Virtual Pool. I couldn't understand that at the time, but I certainly can now. Outside that one experience, I'd never actually played Seventh Guest until this week. By the time I got my own PC, the FMV boom was in full effect and I was wise enough to realise that a lot of these games were very much movies with a bit of gameplay attached. So even though Seventh Guest had blown me away years prior, by the time it came to me being able to claim it for myself, I'd already moved on. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why you're getting a Seventh Guest video in December, because that's how my mind works. So let's get down to it, shall we? Seventh Guest is a horror puzzle game in which the horror is about as spooky as the blurb on the back of a Goosebumps book, and the puzzles are it's sort of like something you'd find in a puzzle book. They are quite literal puzzles. This isn't a point-and-click adventure game, or a puzzle game in the sense that you're trying to work out what to do or where to go next, although that does sort of play a part as well. Now, this is essentially a collection of horror-themed logic puzzles wrapped up in an FMV game. That being said, if you're planning on playing Seventh Guest at some point in your life, I may spoil some puzzles, but equally, I wouldn't worry about that too much. If you can remember the answers to any of these puzzles from the footage I'm showing you, then you're probably the sort of person that'll be able to work these puzzles out pretty quickly anyway, you absolute genius, you. This game, alongside Myst, were the poster childs of the CD-ROM revolution, thanks to their CD quality, audio and visuals, and Seventh Guest wastes absolutely no time in showing you that, yes, this game comes on a CD. Now watch this film and be wowed. He was a drifter, moving from town to town, robbing a gas station here, a grocery store there, until... Can you even believe a game looks this good? How did they make it look so real? Well, sarcasm aside, once the introduction's complete, you may be left wondering what the hell is actually going on, and that feeling of confusion lasts all the way up until you complete the game and realise that you actually have no idea what this story's meant to be. Considering the game is largely FMV based, you'd think the writing would at least be halfway decent, but no. This game feels like it was translated into Spanish and back into English and then edited by a cat. The general gist, if there is even a general gist I can provide, there was a homeless man called Stauf, then one day he pops a cap in some woman's ass, then he has a dream about a doll, but the doll ends up being real, so then he makes a replica of the doll for some reason. Then he gives the doll to a barman who gives it to his daughter, then he has another dream about a puzzle, and he makes the puzzle, and then he opens a toy shop to sell his dolls, and then some of the children start dying, then Stauf has a dream about a house and he builds the house. That. That, that's your introduction. If you're baffled, then that's cool. That feeling will continue all the way through this game. You get a run-on introduction that then introduces each of the guests who are ghosts, I guess, but they're sort of 
memories, really, but also ghosts. It's confusing. Just go with it. My, isn't this a cheery place? Once that's over and done with, you're introduced to your sassy skeleton hand. Oh no, he didn't! The sassy skeleton hand is your spooky way of getting around this interactive DVD menu of a game, and it'll change to an appropriate icon depending on what and where you click. Me being me, I instantly clicked on this icon, which meant I then had to rewatch the intro sequence all over again. It's at this point you'll realise that you can't skip any cutscenes, so enjoy rewatching things by accident all over again. During my playthrough, I did this far, far more than I'd like to admit. This really cements Seventh Guests in its pacing. It is as slow as molasses. Moving around is trudgesome. Nothing is skippable. It excels at wasting your time in various ways, which you'll no doubt see compounded as we go through the game. It is constantly yapping away at you, insisting on itself at every possible minute. In the drawing room, we'll find our first puzzle. It's never explained why you're doing puzzles, by the by, just roll with that. I'm presented with a planet with letters on it, but Sassy Skeleton Hand tells me I can't do anything, so that's weird. I then realise that the instructions for the puzzle are actually on the table at the back of the room, or this might be some sort of hint book, I have no idea honestly, but at least I now know what to do. I'm looking forward to working this one out. Now this doesn't make sense, or does it? I don't think so. Oh, oh god, I... It won't even let me make any mistakes. Is this even a puzzle when the solution is forced into your hand? The game will reset the puzzle each and every time you click a wrong letter, essentially allowing you to brute force your way through. You'll also be constantly interrupted by Stauf or the protagonist saying completely inane crap. Now this doesn't make sense. Or does it? A perplexing planetary poser. How puzzling. Perhaps a phonemic path can be phrased with a little postulation. What twisted crime of logic would merit such a- I give this puzzle two spoopies out of ten. As you wander the halls of Seventh Guest, you'll constantly be moving your pointer all over the screen to try and find something, anything, to interact with. The game is pretty barren when it comes to being able to do anything. Doors are inexplicably locked and later inexplicably unlocked, so your best bet is to just wander about until you find something new. In the dining room, we get a non-spooky cutscene followed by a terrifying puzzle in which you have to cut a cake. Ah become a grave digger now, have we? You are a glutton for punishment. The idea here is to cut the cake into equal pieces, containing one blank piece, two skulls and two graves. I actually quite like this puzzle, even though I was quaking in my boots the entire time, gripped by fear. I give this one seven spoopies out of ten. Here we get a cutscene in which this raunchy ghost wants to bang the married ghost, and then this happens. Come and talk in my bedroom upstairs, where it's nice and private. <laughs> I didn't add any of those sound effects, by the way. The game just does that a lot. It's at this point we get an opportunity for a little bit of interactivity. When the chattering teeth symbol appears, you can click the scenery for some spooky happenings. In the kitchen, we get to watch a ghost doing this for far, far too long. No, it isn't. I still... Mm -hmm. 
It turns out she was doing a puzzle, something to do with cans. Here's food for thought. Be warned, though. Your mind will be gorged before this night is done. <laughs> like, dude, no matter how menacing a laugh you put on, you're asking me to rearrange cans. There's nothing scary about this, but there is complete confusion. This is the problem with a lot of Seventh Guest's puzzles. You often feel like you're missing some vital piece of information. I walked away from this can puzzle assuming that there was some outside information I needed, but no. Every puzzle, apart from one specific puzzle, has completely internal rules. Everything that happens within the house is completely separate from these puzzles that have been cribbed straight from the bumper book of spoopy brain scratches. Making our way upstairs, slowly, we get more spookiness. And then doors. Doors everywhere. First up though, we get a puzzle that's on a carpet, and it doesn't make an awful lot of sense because a puzzle isn't even on the pattern of the carpet, it's literally just pasted on top of it. Anyway, you just have to change some gates around to create a path from the heart to the exit. It's not difficult, but it's okay. I give it five spoopies out of ten. <laughs> It loses a point because when you complete it, the game has you sit and watch the blood slowly make its way around the maze. Once again, you can't skip anything in this game. Just sit back and don't enjoy it. Can you see the sun is shining on me? It makes me feel so free. Wait, come back, don't! You have to leave, son. You have to come with me. Why should I trust you? Trust him. Don't trust him. Please, come back before! <laughs> Whatever confusion you're feeling right now, don't worry, I'm with you. Ah, oh, the madman's playroom! Tell me, madman, can you give me real magic? Can you show me? What? Just stop. Okay. Inside the game's room, there's another interactive. Let's see what this spooky option does. Wait. What? I went into the pool table, came out in the oven in the kitchen, but I don't want to be in the kitchen. Can I go back into the oven? No. I have to slowly walk all the way back to where I was. So here's a thing that Seventh Guest does quite a lot. It gives you these one-way shortcuts, but the icon for them is exactly the same icon as the non-shortcut spooky interactions. So if you want to see those, be prepared to accidentally inconvenience yourself a lot as well. Can you see? Back in the room, it's time for a puzzle in which you have to place eight queens on a chessboard in positions where they can't eliminate each other. This puzzle was a massive pain in the arse, but at least it was sort of a puzzle and it just let me get on with it without too many interruptions. It took me over an hour before I managed to brute force my way through it, but I can't say I really enjoyed it all that much. I'll give this one six spoopies out of ten because at least it tried. <laughs> Understand, oh sweet mercy! I understand. Mister, I'm sorry. I just came here. They dared me. The king, you, you're the one. I'm gonna leave, Mister. Don't, don't run away, please. Don't run away. Don't go. Don't go. Oh, no, don't go. I mean, you could just chase after him instead of crying about it. To clarify a bit on what's going on here, from the little I've gathered of the story, this boy is the titular seventh guest, and Stauf has invited all the other guests into the house, and the puzzle is that they have to bring Stauf the seventh guest, and then he will grant whoever brings the boy to him anything their heart desires. If you're asking why, then I apologise on behalf of the game, because that's never explained.
The next puzzle takes place in a bedroom, and it's another word-based puzzle. Once again, the game refuses to allow you to make an incorrect move, so it's just a case of slowly working things out. You pick a letter that's either three or five spaces in front or behind the last letter. Each time you fail, you have to listen to this. I don't think so. Skipping threes and skipping fives. Perhaps that's how one derives the answer to this wordy tale. But you won't win. You're bound to fail. That doesn't get old. You'd hope that once you finally get through this crap, the answer would make some sort of sense, but you end up with, the sky is ruddy, your fate is bloody. Just superb writing, guys. Good job, everyone. Well done. You did it. Gold star. I give this puzzle three spoopies out of ten. Anyway, because this is the 90s and this is an FMV game, we get some sexless sex to enjoy. You know the others will try to beat us. But it doesn't have to be that way. Not if you and I work together. We can solve Stoff's puzzle. We can win. You can get what you want, Edward. What is it that you want? Edward, shall I try to guess? Uh, mm. Fucking goat outside. It's just a goat. No, it's a fucking goat. I know where the puzzles are to be solved. I know where the puzzles are. I'll take you there. But first. The perfume. The smell, it's, it's, it's changing. I, I can't breathe. I feel so sick. If you think that was all, then just you wait. Don't let your kids watch it! That's not uncomfortable, and I'm glad you can't skip it. Moving on, here's where things get a little tricksy. Oh, it's so... Beautiful, and oh, it's a maze. She's right, that is a maze, but that's not the current puzzle. You see, when you click on the maze, you're taken to this other puzzle instead, but you definitely need to keep that maze in mind because it's absolutely vital later on. So just take a picture of it or something because you'll be kicking yourself up the arse if you don't. Here we have another chess puzzle in which you have to get the bishops on one side to the other side and it's horrible and it takes ages and I hate it. Two spoopies out of ten. It was around this point in the game where I was just aimlessly wandering around and I decided to grab a guide which pointed me in the right direction because there is nothing more monotonous in this game than just wandering around slowly. The lack of interaction means that even the gentle task of moving from A to B feels completely laborious and bloated. And the guide reminded me that I'd forgotten to do the tin can puzzle in the kitchen so I went back there and I started on the puzzle. An hour later, I solved it through blind luck because the solution is stupid. You have to arrange the cans to form a sentence that has no vowels in it. That sentence is... Shy, gypsy, slyly, spryly, tryst by my crypt. Shut the front door. One spoopy out of ten. I hate these cans. He hates these cans! Completing the cans inexplicably allows you to enter this room, which leads to another puzzle that's a piece of piss. You just have to slide these pieces into place to make a hole to climb through. Although, technically, you could just crawl through while it's in this position. But no, Seventh Guest doesn't work with logic. I give this one five spoopies out of ten because at least it only takes a minute. We're then stuck inside the maze I discussed earlier. Even when you know which way to go, it takes ages and it is incredibly boring and it does this whenever you hit a dead end feeling lonely one spoopy out of ten the maze leads to a crypt and the crypt has a puzzle in it surprise because why not you have to close all the coffins and depending on which one you click it'll open another and it'll close others it's a fine enough logic puzzle that has absolutely zero originality to it, but it's fine. It's not annoying, so that's good. I give it eight spoopies out of ten. Mind, Five, six, seven, 
After another decade of wandering and nonsensical FMV sequences, the door then turns into a puzzle, and it's pretty difficult not to be able to solve this one in seconds. By this point though, the faster a puzzle can be solved, the better it is because I'm absolutely done in terms of patience. Place a spider, move it along to an opposite point, and then do this until all the points are filled. Six spoopies out of ten. Come on! Come on! Come! Please! At this point, random doors have started to unlock. It doesn't tell you this has happened, you just have to figure that out yourself, apparently. Up in one of the bedrooms, we get this card puzzle in which you have to turn all the cards face up. You can only select cards that are horizontal or vertical to the ones you've already turned over. This puzzle is pretty easy. So easy, in fact, that they give you two to solve, and they're both just as easy as each other. It's not intrusive, though. It doesn't stop to talk to you every three seconds, and it's over pretty quickly, so 8 out of 10. Just to prove absolutely no one in this game is relatable in any way... This must be your room. But I don't want to go in yet. I'm still a little shaky. There's nothing to be scared of, except Stoff's tricks. Will you be in your room? Yes. Or the game room. We all want something, don't we? I mean, that's what we're here for, isn't it? I suppose so. And, and what is, <gasps> what is it that you want? Ha, ah, not much. Just, I've been a stage magician all my life. I want to know, is there real magic? No. Nope. Moving on to an extremely strange place next, you go through this door here, and then you're stepping out of the shower in front of the door and you have to turn around in order to find the puzzle. It's weird. I don't know why they did it like this. Ooh, look, an interactive scene. No, 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 don't take, don't take me somewhere else. God damn it. Can you see? The next puzzle is another godforsaken chess puzzle, and this time you have to move all the white pieces to where the black pieces are again, and vice versa again. Even with a fairly decent idea on how to do this one, because there's only a certain number of options available at any given time, this took me an unnecessarily long amount of time, thanks mostly due to the overly long animations and the constant interruptions from Stauf, who keeps telling me to stop taking so long. Don't take all night. 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 I wish I could change that, mate, but this is what you've given me. I give this one two out of ten for taking forever. Don't take all. Next puzzle is basically exactly the same as the card one, but this time it's coins instead of cards, but it's exactly the same. 7 out of 10 for copying the other puzzle's homework, but whatever. Oh my word. Yes. Oh, this is it. Oh, all this money. <laughs> rich. Filthy rich. <laughs> no. What is this? What? What's going on? It's a good question. <laughs> yeah, people keep dying and there's no real explanation as to why that's happening, but again, whatever. By this point, you just don't care. Time for the next puzzle. It's a box flipping thing. As soon as you start to play it, Stauf says, Give up? Which is a bit rude, considering I felt like giving up about four hours ago. This puzzle's got nothing to do with it. In this puzzle, we change the rows or columns to try and get the picture to match the original picture. Sometimes it seems to create an odd scenario where it's pretty much impossible, but outside of that, it's not too difficult. Four out of ten. Anyway, it's time for a story revelation. Dolls! Why would Stoff keep this room 
a room filled with dolls locked. Unless, oh no, I know what this is. I know what these dolls are. Don't you see? Don't you see what this is? There's a... that voice. She lived next door to us. And Samantha, she got sick and, oh no, the dolls are the children. Yes, Stauf has somehow turned children into dolls. And for some reason, honestly, it was better when they didn't try to explain anything because the more they explain, the less it makes sense. In the same room, we can enter this doll's house for, again, some reason. And oh shit, it's that boy. <laughs> because at this point, why not just throw in every ancient meme I can think of? This puzzle is another stupid word puzzle in which the words are dumb. The idea behind it is dumb, and my patience in life has pretty much killed itself off. You move some letters around until you get the sentence, Get Boy Tad. Tad is the name of the boy that was being chased by everyone. I'm not sure when it ever told us his name was Tad, but screw it, I've lost every care in the world at this point. There's a secret room we can go in again. Now, I have no idea how you're supposed to know this, but regardless. It leads to an altar made of solid stone, so it can't really be that secret. Surely you'd be able to spot this fairly easily. There's a floor puzzle here where you have to get from A to B, and I did it first time, I don't know how, but apparently I didn't do it correctly, even though I don't know how I did it correctly, because the second time I did it, I just went a different way and I beat it that time. I'd love to tell you what this puzzle actually is, but all I can really tell you is that if you're lucky, you'll accidentally click on the right things and solve it. So, 6 out of 10. We don't, we don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. We've now arrived at an altar where there's a baby and Stauf is sacrificing the baby or something, even though this has nothing to do with all of the other stuff he's been doing. I get the feeling they recorded a load of spooky scenes in front of a green screen and then tried to piece them together into a story afterwards. Seems to me you've lived your life like a can. The next puzzle is a microscope puzzle, a game which a lot of you may be familiar with because much like everything in Seventh Guest, it's just a game they've taken from somewhere else and slapped a theme over it. This is less of a puzzle and more of a combative game which you play against the AI. You have to move your pieces in order to absorb your opponent's pieces and end up with the most pieces on the board by the end. It's a pretty good game, one that you could easily play literally anywhere else, but here's the thing. Try as I might, I could not for the life of me beat this damn thing and I couldn't really find a tactic that had any chance of winning. The AI beat me every single damn time, and it seemed to be using the optimal moves at its disposal at any given moment. I looked up some tips for this, and it turns out that, yes, that's exactly what the game is doing. The AI scales in difficulty based on the power of your CPU. And as I'm playing this on a PC that's magnitudes more powerful than the computer this game was designed for, well, let's just say there's no chance of me beating it. So I had to find an outside tool for help. I came across this website that allows you to input the moves the computer has made and it'll calculate the optimal move you need to make in order to beat it. And get this, it still took three goddamn attempts before I actually beat it. My computer was in effect playing against itself using the best possible moves and it was still winning. So uh, one out of 10, impossible. The next puzzle is again, not a puzzle. It's just a memory test, a memory test that takes forever. And get this, you can very easily do this. That's right, the exit puzzle button is in between two of the notes that you need to press. So not only is it slow anyway, you have to play it even slower at this point just to make sure you don't actually quit. <sighs> One out of ten, make this game finish please. Next, it's a picture puzzle, which basically just works the same as the crypt puzzle we did earlier because apparently the designers have gotten to the point where they've run out of basic logic puzzles to steal, so they've just started stealing them from themselves. I give this one two out of ten because I want to die. Back 
and get dressed. Next puzzle, some door thing. I have no idea what the rules are. I clicked on things, I won. I'm not even sure it was a puzzle. One out of ten. In the attic, another puzzle. Again, I have no idea what is going on. I click on things, it does some other things, and then I win. I'm pretty sure there's some actual rules or something involved with this, but... I completely lucked out, so I'm just going to give this one 10 out of 10 because this is the last puzzle and I can't take any more. <laughs> anyway, it's the end of the game now. Some woman delivers the boy to Stauf. Stauf melts the woman in a pool of sick. The boy doesn't run away, even though he easily could, and then Stauf uses some sort of lizard tongue on him. I've no idea why Stauf is now some sort of demon creature. Oh, by the by, it turns out you're this boy, and by completing the logic puzzles in the house, none of the stuff you've seen has actually happened. Once again, for the people in the back, the reasons why are not explained, and I just don't care. You saved me! You... It's all been changed now. Now... And, and forever. Do I recommend Seventh Guest? No. No, I don't. It is slow. It is uninspired. It is boring. It is frustrating. It is sometimes impossible. But it is a piece of history, a legacy of the CD-ROM era, and one that made me open my eyes to PC gaming and the possibilities contained within it. But that's mostly because I was a stupid child who should have been paying more attention to Virtual Pool and SimCity 2000 instead of this shit.